Hey there, and welcome to Q&A Wednesday. Yes, it is a special time today for a couple of reasons, but we're just checking it out to see if it's a better option, if it works better for more people. So let me know if this is work time works better for you. Leave a message below. Let us know that this works. Sorry, now I just got the like somebody's trying to call me at the same time. Um, or if six o'clock just worked better for you, you know what? That works too. You know, we're, we're just trying to help do the best we can to give you answers and help teach you the really the way that your body works so that you have the best um, experience when you're trying to reach your health goals. That's really the goal there. So let's talk about tonight's um, topic. It's a really good one. Um, you know, I get a lot of people that say, you know, how do I deal with my hunger? Um, you know, what are some things are are appetite suppressants appropriate? you know what should I do so uh, this is gonna be broken down a little differently because first of all you got to know the difference between hunger like true physical hunger and hunger so we're gonna talk a little bit about that and then I do have some great suggestions um, because really there's a way around that um, you know hunger is there for a reason we're gonna talk about why that is so first of all the biggest difference between let's stop let's talk about it what is the difference between you know real physical hunger and then that mental emotional hunger and how do I how do I tell the difference um, and it really it's not as hard as you think it, it might if you've never really talked about or learn to listen to your body and what it needs to do in order to tell you that you're truly hungry you might actually mistake mental and emotional hunger for true hunger so here's the best way to decide whether you're truly hungry if you're physically in need of nourishment or if you're just craving food um, the the biggest way or the best way to tell is what will solve it, right? Because if vegetables or something healthy, a healthy snack is your best option and you know that those hunger pangs will go away, then you're probably physically hungry. But if it needs to be some sort of comfort food, if you're thinking, well, I need bread or ice cream or, you know, comfort food, that's exactly what it is, right? It's comfort food. If it is a necessity for comfort food to get rid of that hunger, then you're actually not physically hungry, you're mentally and emotionally hungry. Um, if, you know, it took me a long time, you know, even as an adult, I didn't really understand the difference. And there is this, there's kind of, it's a deep kind of a burning um, sensation in your stomach. That's physical hunger. Sometimes if you've never really paid attention, it might be a new concept to you. And really in this day and age where food is so readily available, most of us really have never gone true hunger. You know, we've really never gone hungry before. So actually learning to listen to your body and to what it actually desires um, is a big part of it. Kind of, you know, really think your way through it. Which thing is going to solve it? Is a vegetable going to be okay? You know, and I know that that works for me. That if, you know, if a, if a vegetable, if a green pepper or, you know, maybe I'll make myself a quick spinach salad, that will solve how I feel, then I'm probably physically hungry. If it is, you know, I need cookies or cupcakes or ice cream, it's probably not a physical hunger, it's a craving, it's an emotional issue, and that uh, takes a different approach. So let's talk about that. You know, once you've got that figured out, um, you know, you might actually have to keep a journal for a while. You know, how am I feeling? I really feel like I need a piece of cake. Um, you know, why am I feeling that? What just happened that sent me kind of that direction? Because um, a lot of times we stress eat. I know that when, and, and I know I still desire that. I still crave certain things when I get stressed out. Um, but I have learned that that's an emotional craving and I know how to deal with that as opposed to actual physical hunger. I've learned the difference. It took me a lot of years. Now this is coming from someone who, you know, when I was 28 years old, I was 210 pounds. So I'm not telling you this as some like, oh, she's skinny and she knows what she's talking about. Guys, I have been on that end of the spectrum. I know the difference, you know, and I do still struggle. There's once in a while where, you know, I get really stressed out and I want to stick my head in a bag of M&Ms. You know, I want chocolate, but I know that that is not a physical craving. So we really do need to make sure that you are physically hungry, not emotionally hungry, because I know a lot of people will say, well, you know, what can I use as an appetite suppressant? The problem with appetite suppressants is that they don't deal with a, an emotional or a mental hunger. They only deal with a physical hunger and physical hunger is ne is necessary. You actually need to have a physical hunger because that's how you know your metabolism is working. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a second as well. So the second thing I want you to really think about is, you know, if you are doing some ridiculously low calorie diet, you are going to be physically, you're not going to just be mentally hungry because you will, your body's going to take any means possible to get you to eat. When you're eating a super low calorie or restricted diet, 
your body will fight you on it, both physically and mentally. You will have cravings, you will be hungry, you have hunger pains. You have to make sure you're actually eating enough calories for your body. That, number one, is important. Now, here's my description of that, because I know most of us are like, well, but isn't that counterproductive? Aren't we supposed to eat a ridiculously low amount of calories so that we can so we can lose weight? The problem with that is that, number one, you're dropping your metabolism to meet that. So if you're not eating enough calories for your body you know, for where you are, your metabolism will drop with that as well and it will make it even harder to lose weight. Number two, if you're starting out like I did at like 210 pounds and you're only eating 1200 calories, where are you going to go when you lose 20 pounds? There's nowhere to go less than 1200 calories. You need to start with a good range of calories where you can work your way down. If you have a Fitbit, you should have kind of a good idea of what your average calorie burn is and drop that by 500 calories per day. Any more than a thousand calorie reduction, a deficit, your body's gonna go into starvation mode and it's going to fight you tooth and nail to make you eat. So, you know, I tell people the smaller the car, the smaller the gas tank. At 210 pounds, I was eating 2,400 calories and losing weight. Now, when I dropped 50 pounds, I no longer needed 2,400 calories. Maybe I needed closer to 2,000 or even 1,800 calories. But you have to have the ability to work your way down. Otherwise, you're going to plateau and you're going to be angry and your body is going to fight you. And that's why we yo-yo diet. We get to the point we can't stand that any. It's, it's not sustainable. And then we go and we eat whatever we can find in our kitchen and fall off the wagon, get frustrated and have that effort moment. You know, that's not healthy. That's not beneficial. So you've got to start out where you're eating enough food. That's super important. Um, and of course, remember that it's not crappy food. There's a big difference. We're going to talk about this in a second between whole clean foods that actually trigger satiation, which means you're no longer hungry. You are full, um, and help to prevent you from actually becoming physically hungry. So again, if you think that an appetite suppressant is going to work for you, there are times and places where that is appropriate, but for the most part, the problem is, is that people aren't eating enough of the right foods for your hormones to trigger, hey, I'm full, I don't need any more food, and you're no longer physically hungry. So number one, make the distinction between mental and emotional hunger and physical hunger, and number two, make sure that you're eating enough so that you can pay attention, eating enough of the right foods so your body can do its job. You know that as human beings, we were designed to eat whole, clean foods, and there's benefits to it. I get it. You know what? I want a Twinkie once in a while. I want to have a milkshake once in a while. But when I consistently eat those kind of foods, the high sugar levels and the processed foods in the things that we eat in the American diet actually confuse your hormones that tell you that you are full. And that's a problem. That's actually one of the biggest problems, that, and that's where overeating comes from pretty easily. All right, the other thing that we gotta look at is your habits. Sometimes, and this falls more under cravings, you know, case in point, if you go to the movies and every time you go to the movies, you get a giant tub of popcorn and, you know, a box of milk duds, that becomes a craving and a habit. It's not that you need it, it's not that you're really hungry for it, it's just something you already do, so, that's, you know, that's what you have to have. Um, same thing if you walk in the door every day, you throw your keys on the front table, and the first thing you do is pop open a bottle of wine and drink a glass. Your body and your mind expect to do that when you walk in the door. You're, you're actually creating neural pathways in your brain that say, okay, I just walked in the front door. I need a glass of wine. There are things that you might have to do to fix that habit. You might have to... Um, create something in order to move on to that. Um, like maybe a, you might have to enter a different door. You might have to go in the garage and come in that way instead of coming in the front door. Or um, you, you, know, you might have to create a new habit to overcome that bad habit. So keep, you know, sometimes it's not just that, it's the habits that we've created that we, our body just expects. It's kind of like Pavlov's dogs. If you've heard that psychological um, research where, you know, they ring the bell, feed the dogs. So every time they would ring the bell, whether there was food there or not, the dogs would salivate because they were expecting food. So if your body's expecting a glass of wine when you walk in the door or expecting a big tub of popcorn when you go to the movies, it's gonna be a really hard habit to overcome. So what I do, I'm just gonna give you just a quick tip on what works for me. Um, when I go to the movies now, I actually, 
don't tell them. Um, but I allow myself something I don't normally allow myself, which is a zero calorie energy drink. Now, I don't think they're healthy. I don't think they're fantastic, but I do think that they're a better option than a tub of popcorn and the cookies. Uh, not gonna lie, I love those cookies. Um, so I allow myself that and, and some water in order to overcome the fact that I'm smelling my husband's popcorn sitting there and watching him eat Reese's Pieces. Um, you know, I've created a new habit, so I totally look forward to that. I don't drink those energy drinks anywhere else because again, they're not really, they're not really healthy. Um, but I allow myself that when I go to the movies, so I'm no longer craving popcorn. I actually don't even like popcorn from the movies. It actually makes me really, really sick. I did not realize that until I stopped doing that and then tried to have popcorn again. Yeah, my guts don't really, really like that. So just, you know, keep that in mind. So I am replacing a bad habit with a better option. You might not be able to have the perfect option. So don't think that perfection is your best option. You might just have to create a slightly better option. So if you're drinking full strength soda, maybe you need to go to diet soda. That stuff's still horrible for you, I know. I, I, but what I'm trying to tell you is you might have to take baby steps on your way through. So maybe you go from full strength, sugar-filled soda to diet soda, and then maybe you go from there to sparkling water. Take those steps to, to cover a bad habit with a slightly better one that you can live with. I think that's really, really important. Really quickly, I wanna go back to, because I just forgot to talk about it, um, about really, really low calorie diets. I've talked about this before, um, but you know, what? I don't know what it is or where we've come to this conclusion that as soon as we go on a diet, we need to drop to 1,200 calories. Um, you know, 1,200 calories is the minimum amount of calories a person, a person should be eating in order to not have severe consequences of starvation. Um, that's not a diet option. There's a, I wrote a book two years ago that you can actually get on Amazon, plug for me, um, called 1,200 Calorie Diets and Other BS. It's kind of written out, but BS, right? Because it's garbage. That amount of information, I don't know where it came from. That's why I'm seriously not a fan of HCG diet, ideal protein, anything that reduces your calories to a ridiculously low amount. Now, granted, there are times and places where that's appropriate, but it should be completely doctor supervised. But I don't think that those diets are the right option. You need to just learn to feed your body better and then you won't need those ridiculous. You can't maintain that. What happens is when you go back off those diets, Diets, your body bounces back. You know, yo-yo dieting. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm sticking within that doctor and I've got to stick with it. Oh my gosh. And as soon as you make one choice that's not within plan, you just, you go into an effort moment. You know, that's, that's not okay. We're going to wax and wane. We're going to make mistakes. There are times when I do eat my feelings, but I don't throw everything out the window just because I made one choice that wasn't perfect. So make sure that you're really eating enough calories for you and your body type. One of the best things I ever heard was somebody that said, you know, eat as many calories as you can eat, and of course we're talking healthy food people, and still lose weight. Now, again, you know I don't like the word, I don't like the term lose weight, I wanna lose fat. Losing weight is a whole different ball game. Losing fat is what's important, but I need to be able to walk down, and so should you. All right, the other thing is, if you are hungry, you need to feed that metabolism. Now, I find it really fun. I do a lot of nutrition coaching. Um, I find it really fun, especially my guys, when I first give them kind of a sample meal plan and their macros, and they're going, I can't even eat this much food. And I'm like, listen, honey, you were eating triple the amount of calories, those calories, with pizza every Friday night with your buddies and the beer that you're drinking. So when you're eating clean food, you can eat so much more food. You're actually gonna struggle in the beginning to eat all of your macros when it's whole clean food for multiple reasons. Number one, again, there are th there are actual things, um, vitamins, minerals, and nutrition in whole clean foods that will trigger your hormones that tell you you are full. That does not happen in processed food. So when you start eating, it's gonna take you a little while to build up to the amount of calories that you should be eating, but again, you have to be able to walk down. After about two weeks of, of really trying to stick with it, you're going to be hungry. You're actually going to start to, before your next meal, go, oh my gosh, I'm actually hungry. Welcome to your metabolism, people. We have to build the metabolism in order to match where we need to go. Then we have the availability to walk you down. So the problem might not be that you um, don't need to eat. It might be that you just don't need to eat crap. 
right? It's kind of the same thing with people who want to fully cut out carbs. Don't cut out carbs. Carbohydrates, especially in their complex forms, are necessary and good for you. They, they have vitamins and minerals that you need. The problem is most people equate carbs with a straight across the board, right? A bunch of sugar. Isn't a Pop-Tart the same thing as an apple? They both have simple sugars in them. No, they're not the same thing. So you're not necessarily trying to eat less food. You need to eat less processed food that your body actually really just doesn't need. And, and I know that's a difficult process. So don't think that that's going to happen overnight. You're better off to make one or two small changes to try and change those habits than to try and change everything at once. So Joanne, she says Diet Coke. Yep, I totally can understand that. Uh, it took me a while to lean my to wean myself off of diet sodas. Um, really not a fan of diet soda at this point because, of course, there's aspartame and Splenda or sucralose in them, um, and those things are actually harmful for you. Uh, sucralose actually still spikes blood sugar. Um, it is a derivative of sugar, so of course it's going to do that. Um, it is not a zero calorie option, as they try to tell you. Um, they just get to put that because under a loophole, if it has under 0.5 grams of sugar per serving, look at the serving size, guys. Um, they don't have to put that it contains sugar. So yeah, there's a lot of gimmicks and garbage going on that you really need to pay attention to, especially if you're um, struggling in certain ways. Maybe you're doing, every, you think you're doing everything right, but you're not seeing results. We might need to take two steps back and look at some of those things that you might think of as minor, like six cans of soda pop a day. Very well could be your undoing, even if it's diet, okay? All right, so I've got some tips for you. Now, we've talked about the difference between hunger and hunger, and that is super important. We've talked about that you need to feed your metabolism. So if it is true physical hunger, you actually need to feed that. You just need to feed it with healthy foods. And I've got some great tips for you. Okay. Um, if it, if you discover that it really is more mental, emotional hunger, if it's a craving, you know, try distracting yourself for a little bit, go for a walk. Um, exercise is a great benefit because number one, exercise actually has shown to be a natural appetite suppressant. Um, do something that keeps your mind off of it. I know that it's very difficult, especially if there's some major stress going on in your life, but if you've already built some other options besides emotional eating, eating your feelings, then that's a great way to distract yourself. Do something different, play a board game, um, you know, start a project, read a book, do something that can keep your mind off of it for a while. You'll actually notice that that craving actually goes away. Um, number two, we talked about the appetite suppressants will not solve emotional eating. It's only designed to physically suppress your appetite. And that's not necessarily a good thing. When you're hungry, when you're truly physically hungry, that is telling you that your metabolism is up. So um, that's, it's just not always the answer for that. Number three, drink water. Sometimes what we think is hunger is actually thirst. Um, we just can't distinguish that. And again, it comes down to we never really been taught what that feels like. So you know, drink a, a glass, eight ounce glass of water and see if that, what, what you feel subsides. Um, because of course it's super, super easy to get dehydrated. Even 1% um, loss of hydration in your system will actually trigger some pretty major things. By the time you're actually thirsty or your body's telling you you're thirsty, you're actually dehydrated. So, you know, staying you know, hydrated is half the battle there but it can actually help keep you from being hungry. Um, eat more frequently. You know, I try to get my clients to eat between, you know, four and six meals a day so that they don't get to the point where they are so physically hungry that they eat things that they shouldn't because that also can be a problem, right? You know, we, we get to the end of the work day, maybe we've had two meals or we skipped a meal and we've had coffee and now we're ravenous and we literally get to the point where we're going, well, Eating, eating something's better than not eating anything, right? So then you eat whatever you can find. Well, you've just done yourself a huge disservice. You do need food. You do need calories and nutrition. The problem is, is because you didn't plan ahead, now you're going to eat stuff that really takes you away from your goal instead of pushing to your goal. So, um, you know, eating more frequently will help you avoid poor choices. Um, when you eat foods, you know, I don't know where people came up with this calories in, calories out. That's the only thing that's important. You know, I should only be eating 1,300 calories. Yeah, it depends on what it is. There's a benefit to eating quality food, and the macros also make a difference. So, you know, 1,200 calories of bread and processed food is not going to keep you satiated, and that's why we end up overeating. But if you start eating fats, now fats are satiating, which means you'll fill up and feel full. 
protein is not only thermogenic, but it's long lasting when it comes to satiation or feeling full or satisfied. So if you are eating a little bit higher protein and fat, now we're talking good fats because there's a difference, right? Um, you know, eating deep fried food does not count as a healthy fat, people. You gotta eat the right kind of things. Um, olive oil, coconut oil, avocado, nuts. Nuts are a great option, especially if you are you know, having a craving or just really needing a quick pick-me-up that is not junk. Um, because they're healthy fats, they've got some proteins in there, and they've got some, some healthy, slow-digesting carbs in there, and that's a great option. So if you eat, when I do meal plans. Now again, minor sample meal plans, people, um, because I want people to learn to switch things out and how to eat a really healthy diet or help meal plan. Don't like the word diet. Um, every meal has protein in it because if you will ingest some protein every three to four hours, it's thermogenic and slow digesting enough that you should not get physically hungry throughout the day. It really comes down to being prepared and planning ahead. If you already know what you're going to eat for the day and you're eating them at at you know three to four hour intervals you should never get to the point where you're so ridiculously hungry that you're going to binge and eat things that you shouldn't so you know you can actually help yourself by planning ahead and eating at those intervals so that you don't get to that point of oh my gosh i'm so hungry i'm gonna eat whatever i can find right because we get home and we find that bag of chocolate we hid in the back of the <laughs> back of the cupboard um, fiber also helps with, with satiation and feeling full as well. So if you're eating healthy fi fiber filled food, um, you're going to benefit from that as well. You're not going to be physically hungry. Now, again, that's not going to take care of emotional, um, and mental hunger that has to be dealt with in a little bit different way. Like I said, starting probably with a journal, um, of what triggers you to get to that point. Um, eat breakfast. Okay. I don't understand why people even skip breakfast. Um, it's okay if you have a cup of coffee and then wait a little while, but make sure that you're eating breakfast and that you're eating protein at your breakfast. Eggs are a complete protein guys. Um, all those vitamins and minerals and the nutrients that are in the egg yolk make that an amazing food. So why not have an egg scramble or, you know, make something with some eggs. I do a protein pancake every morning with um, egg whites and protein powder. Um, and then in the evening I do an egg scramble with veggies and it's so good. Um, it will make you feel full longer and you will be able to resist, you know, the junk in the break room that somebody brought in. I've heard, I've seen, I know. Uh, so eat breakfast and eat it high in protein. Eat slow enough, scarfing it down, I know, I know we have busy jobs, busy lives, and it comes to that, but when you eat food that fast, your body doesn't have time to set off those hormones that say, hey honey, you're full, you really don't need any more food. If you've ever gotten to the point where you're, like Thanksgiving, where you're so ridiculously full, it's uncomfortable, that's a problem. That's where we tend to overeat, and especially if we're eating highly processed food, Again, it's not giving us the benefit. So if you're eating clean and taking your time and stop doing multiple things at the same time. If you struggle with eating too much food in general, stop doing it while you're watching TV or, you know, granted there's times where it's a social aspect and I get that, but be more mindful of what you're putting in your mouth. Pay attention. It really does make a difference. Um, something that I do when I really truly am hungry, I've actually got two, two really good tips for that. Number one, I chew lots of gum. I chew lots of sugar-free gum. Be careful. Not all gum is created the same. Even not all sugar-free gum is created the same. Be careful of finding aspartame in those options. Your best option is usually xylitol. It's good for your teeth. Um, yeah, you know, chewing gum, it gives your mouth something to do and it kind of almost tricks your mind to say, hey, I'm getting something. The other thing that I do is if I am really truly hungry and I'm done with my macros for the day um, because of whatever my goals are at the moment, I'll eat more vegetables. It's really hard to overdo it on vegetables. Um, I'll make myself an extra salad or I'll eat a pepper or just something because if I'm truly physically hungry, that will satisfy that need for food, right? We just talked about that. Um, don't drink your calories. Um, one of the most frustrating things I see is people who, you know, maybe they're supposed to eat 1800 calories for the day and 660 of that is in a Starbucks latte with who knows what the heck. Um, first of all, that's f so full of sugar. And of course, sugar is addicting. So you've actually done yourself two disservices. Number one, you're drinking away your calories. It doesn't make you feel full. And number two, you're getting a whole ton of sugar, which is going to 
short run, long run, no matter how you look at it, you're going to want more food because you're going to feel really, really great for a minute and then you're going to crash when that sugar leaves your, leaves your bloodstream. So be careful to not get all your calories through drinking, right? It, it does make a, a big difference. I per, way prefer to eat my calories versus drink them. Um, we talked about exercise. Get enough sleep. Um, sleep lack of sleep and stress can actually manifest themselves as hunger. And I know that seems really kind of weird, but think about it. If your body's not getting enough recovery, it's trying to get the energy that it needs in any way that it possibly can. And with that comes cravings. Cravings are there for a reason. Sometimes they're there because you're missing out on a certain nutrient. You know, if you've ever gone, oh my gosh, I need chocolate. Well, ladies, if you're the week before your period, you probably need some magnesium. Your body is, is working against you for that reason. So, you know, acknowledge it, figure out what works that isn't full of sugar and garbage. And if you need chocolate, eat the highest amount or percentage of dark chocolate you can get away with. Mine, I think is 85. That's about as dark as I go. And then ugh, it's just too bitter. Um, 70 something is better, but it's still going to contain a little too much sugar. So if you really need it, find a better way. Remember we just talked about, it doesn't have to be the perfect way. It just needs to be a better option than you were doing before. Work your way through that. Once you create that habit and you feel successful and confident and you're seeing progress, uh, then you can take the next step. Don't go, don't go from zero to 60 all at once. We all know that that's why we don't stay with our New Year's resolutions. It's just too much to keep up with. Okay, and last but not least, plan your day. You guys, it's so much easier. I get clients all the time that are texting me, dude, I still have 50 grams of protein today, no carbs left. First of all, I don't see how that's a problem. You can eat protein without carbs. Um, but if you've planned for the day, you should know exactly what you're eating. Um, I plan the night before. Now granted, I'm on a meal plan that I made myself and I pretty much eat the same thing every day for the most part. And yes, I'm getting all my vitamins and nutrients in. I can tell you how to do that another time. But if you wake up tomorrow and you don't know what you're going to eat for the day, you've already lost because it's it's too difficult, right? If, if you are running late to, the, to take the kids to school because the alarm didn't go off and then you get to work and you realize you literally have no food with you, you're screwed, right? You need to have already... If you take lunch to work, you food prep. So don't tell me that you can't food prep. It's one of the best ways to stay on target and reach your goals. Make sure that you have what you need with you. And if for some odd reason you tend to forget a lot, have some food at work. You know, most people have a fridge at work, in the break room, whatever. Write your name on it. Threaten death to anybody that gets into your stuff. But have some, have a bag of almonds in your desk drawer. Have a protein shake. The Premier ones from Costco, super simple. You just stick them in the fridge. They taste great. Don't let those freeze because they get really nasty if you let them freeze. But have some alternatives. Have a plan B just in case something like that happens. Or know what you can get at the grocery store if you absolutely need to. Or I know what I can, uh, you can't make me eat at McDonald's. You just can't. I just won't do it at this point. But I, if I have to eat at a fast food restaurant, I know what I can do to get away with it. Worst case scenario. It doesn't have to be, oh my gosh, the Big Mac sounds so good. I just let myself have it. Well, just because you screwed up by not bringing the food doesn't mean you have to continue to screw up because you're never going to reach your goal. Then you're going to beat yourself up and go through the guilt cycle, blah, blah, blah. I, I know I've been there. I know how that works. So, Again, if you are hungry, go back through and lis listen to all the things we talked about. Make sure that it's physical hunger and not mental and emotional hunger. Make sure that you're eating enough so you're not fighting your body and your natural ability to nourish yourself. And make some good choices and plan ahead. Um, and do it step by step. Stop thinking that you're going to be, if you're starting from scratch, you are not going to be a supermodel tomorrow. It just does not work that way. Find a way that works for you. Find your groove and find your balance. So hopefully that helps. You know, you guys, I get my best ideas from you. So please make sure that you leave a message below. Leave a comment. Give me some ideas. You can also message me directly through Facebook. Um, I answer questions all the time. Make sure that they're good questions. Don't just say, hi, how are you? Like, ask me some good questions. I want to answer. Um, it's why I do all this for free. I give free information because I want you to be happy and healthy. So until next week, that's Q&A Wednesday. Have a good one, guys. Talk to you later.